Um, do you guys want to hear my folk hero song really quick? Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay, so I, it's like three quarters. I need like one more little bit. I don't know if you guys have heard the like Gallivant theme song. Um, in my head every time I shut my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm doing it. I basically just rewrote the, the Gallivant theme song. So here's what I've got so far. <laughs> um, Come here and gather round, foretell this tale here found about our hero from the land of Vicin. So pale with hair of white, born in a land of night, with naught but danger and monsters to raise him now. From neath the boot of Inquisition, he will sue their imposition. And then that's as far as I've gotten. <laughs> Put your hands in the air, assume the position. I don't know. That's incredible. Oh my god, that was beautiful. And now I have to play Dark the Soul game again. Just became the main character. He has a theme song. Uh, don't none of us can top that. Yeah, no, man. And Jesus, now I have a cold is... open for episode three. <laughs> <laughs> The Terrible Warriors is brought to you by supporters from patreon.com slash terrible warriors. They voted for a game and they chose this one. We return to the seventh sea. Arriving in Montanan after saving Pastora to search for her brother captured by the Inquisition. Our heroes have learned of a plot by the bishop to marry into the family. And what better way to announce a marriage than at a fiesta? We've learned all we can about the family. We've set up our plan to sneak Ramon out in the middle of the night. And we have had our bath. It's time to don our fancy hats once again. For there is no stake higher than true love itself. This is part three of the seventh sea, love and consequence. And our adventurers turned instant folk heroes. They are your terrible warriors. Welcome back, my terrible warriors. It is I, one of your many players tonight, Mike the Birdman Dodd from this week in Net. And welcome back to the third episode of Seventh Sea. But I'm not alone as I cross these treacherous waters and even more dangerous lands. I'm joined on my fictional left by... I'm Derek the Bard from Chase the Muse, playing uh, Lady Anna Henrietta de Pai. And here in You're the, the Toronto Pie Lady, <laughs> and here in Toronto studio, I am uh, Justin Ecock playing Francesco Florento, and uh, Bree Poison playing our f- instant folk hero Dirk Vice. <laughs> yeah. And also coming from Edmonton is Will Mitchell, and I'm running this sucker. Dun dun, pulling all the strings. It's time yeah. to get to the party. We're about to get our fiesta on. Da, 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 uh, our da, da, brave da. heroes have just sort of put together all the pieces to find out the villainous plot of Bishop Adela Fierro. Uh, she's bought a bunch of land around the small town of Montanon. Uh, she's got herself sort of engaged to a uh, local noble son who's in love with this other guy in another country, and he just wants to go away and be in love, but she's not having that. That gets in the way of her plan. She must inherit his land. And so she tried to kidnap him, and that's where our heroes come in. Now you stand at the gates to the Machado family estate here in Montanon. There's some lovely guitar music coming out across the hot Castilian evening. Uh, There's lights on, there's people coming up in carriages, various fancy clothes coming from the surrounding countryside and the town. It looks like it's a nice little party. Mm-hmm. Indeed. Well, um, Anna is in her full getup. She's actually dressed in... Uh, she's all, uh, Instead of wearing a formal uh, Montanian dress, she is dressed uh, in a more Castilian fashion, still with the long sleeves. Um, still carrying a freaking parasol for some reason. Nice. Um, it's the same parasol. Um, of course. And her makeup is great. Her hair is on point. There are lots of just, like, decorative pins and stuff stuck in it, uh, such as one might use to not, not so inconspicuously slit a vein open if necessary. Um, yeah. Very nice. Uh, how's everybody else dressed? Uh, well, I'm dressed like... Anna dressed us. Basically lo- <laughs> like someone's bodyguard. Uh, dressed in... Uh, Sort of that military crispness to a typical Castilian uniform. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, still covered in my pistols, but they're more ornate. So they're my dress pistols. Um, I'm probably not going to let you go in with too many pistols. You can get away with two. I don't think they're going to let you come in with a whole bandolier of firearms. <laughs> I mean, you can always press knives? the issue or sneak it. Ornamental knives, that's, that's <laughs> yeah, easy to hide You have over. to tie your dog. All right, then I'll hide a shit ton of <laughs> ornamental knives. We're still in a time period where many people do still carry uh, knives for eating or the like anyway. Absolutely. So. And a sword, right? Because that's ornamental. Uh, sword's totally fine. A nice little dress sword. All right, I will do that. And uh, I want to have like like a beret. Oh, I'm cool. cool. Like a red All right, a, a tasteful beret on your sort of pseudo military outfit. Well, we all know uh, what hat how I'm is uh, Francisco dressed. We all know how uh, what hat I'm wearing. <laughs> uh, <still> <laughs> with <laughs> black feather in the cap still, um, and uh, it's a very fine hat. I gotta say, Diego, for all of his rat bag uh, ideologies, <laughs> good dresser, good dresser. Um, and now Anna helped dress me because I'm a bit of a. Um, uh, mess. Anna helped up. dress all of you, <laughs> except for Dirk. Uh, but Dirk yeah, needs uh, absolutely no assistance. No guns on me, but similar style. I have my fencing sword. It's, it's. I mean, that's the other, like, other than my very fine hat that was blown away in the first episode, the other finest ornament I would have had would would be my fence, uh, my fencing sword, uh, with a nice ornate Castilian, you know, uh, 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 flowers, nice yeah, on it. flowers and all that other kind of like like the Spanish style and that and. Um, uh. Because uh, I'm 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 a diestro is my background too. I like the art of the sword, the poetry of the sword, not just its you know combat uses, but you know all uses of the sword. And, uh, <laughs> and he's he's coming in here, um, uh, yeah, uh, just the cock of the walk. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of cock of the walk, how's <laughs> Dirk Vice looking? Hello. <laughs> the, the trumpets go off as you walk dun, in the dark. Dun, 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 dun. Um, so I, Dirk dresses very much like an Ison, which is ridiculous because he has nice. never been there in his adult life, but he did get the clothes imported very so specifically. So furs, leathers, and chainmail? <laughs> no, like the slit arms. and It's, and like it's a very the, like the, renaissance man um, sort of thing where the, the clothing all has slits in it with like different color cloth like pulled through on purpose. Um, I, if you can find like a copy of the book and look up Ison, there is a, a drawing yeah. in it there. Yeah, page 36. Um, which... Yeah, with a the, ruffled neck. They get like a ruffled a collar and like a cape over one arm, like very much like yeah, it's nice. Oktoberfest. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> very much like a, a Renaissance. Oh, uh, man. okay. We're, mm-hmm. we're not talking about the other ice in picture. <laughs> no, 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 no we're one. talking about the, the, the fancy Adele. No, guy. the the fancy like ridiculous ice in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lots of golden... The kind who would be invited to a Don's party. Just, just so <laughs> so blinged out and ostentatious on purpose. Freshly shaved. Is, is your mustache bathed. that waxed? That guy's mustache droops down and then it comes right back up. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, Dirk doesn't have a mustache because he's he's a beautiful yaoi animu boy. <laughs> yeah, it gets in the way of the kissing. <laughs> <laughs> but silver really hair. Bad ice <laughs> Silver hair for the silver fox. I do, I'm not. I'm only from there. I'm pretty sure they exported him when he was like five because they yeah. were just like, "You're gonna die. This is awful." You never Go know. Away. You never saw the war. You never saw the 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 the, the, uh, the after effects of the war. You've nope. never seen a demon. No, nope, never actually seen a demon in my life. But like, goddamn, do I look the part? <laughs> You right, will so play the role. As that everybody life comes in, you're sort of greeted. People, That's right. People just <laughs> seem so into me. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> um, so, so we arrive at the party. As you arrive at the party, um, each of you has sort of re- like been recognized. Obviously, Pastora's sort of told the the house servants sort of who you are and to expect you and to let you in. Um, I brought her flowers. And yeah, <laughs> you all kind of get announced sort of briefly as as you enter. I give Pastora the flowers um, I brought. <laughs> And when it gets to Dirk, I brought her me. Uh, you get like a really good intro. Um, and, like, it's obvious that like everybody kind of didn't expect that, considering who else you were with, and like some heads turned to really pay attention to everybody who came in, uh, but mostly to look past you guys to look at Dirk. Uh, I... And then a servant kind of comes and sort of just like uh, uh, this way, Senor, and sort of like indicates for you to sort of head up. Uh, The space that the party's taking place in right now um, is most of the first floor of the house. Um, 
there's sort of as you enter, there's sort of like a uh, a lovely sort of open space with a big, lovely, curving sort of staircase coming down. Um, it's Y-shaped, so it comes from the back of the house down about halfway, and then there's like a balcony slash landing that then splits into sort of two curving sort of horns coming down to the ground. Uh, and the servant is taking you up to that landing where there's an old man who is dressed very finely um, in sort of the aristocratical clothing of the area. And uh, he's standing there sort of looking over the party, and next to him, in sort of very, very eye-catching crimson, uh, is the bishop, Adel Fierro. Um, <laughs> uh, I am... The, the moment we meet the bishop, because I might as well, and because it might start getting hilarious, I'm going to spend a hero point, I'm going to use... I'm going to invoke my virtue again. Mm -hmm. Friendly. I love it. Um, that's probably handy, because you can see that, like, Adel Fierro has never known joy. <laughs> it's impossible I mean, we can, to we imagine that. that face <laughs> smiling. It's impossible to imagine yep. smiling next to her. Um, she is the most on. bitter person you have ever seen. You love it. You love uh, it. I the adore her. being thrown <laughs> in her honor for her upcoming nuptials. And she is just stone faced, zero joy. Zero joy whatsoever. <laughs> she's um, grumpy cat in body. She's like holding, she's holding a, clap, a glass of wine, definitely has not touched it other than to hold it to be polite. <laughs> um, I... Yeah, she's just sort of standing there <laughs> looking over everything and like listening as the Don says things at her. You know, she's not actually caring what he says. Um. Also on the platform, uh, there is. Bree really uh, some wants other to do something. You know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on the platform. Yeah. Up there, you also see that Pastora is there. Um, she's in a lovely dress and has her hair done up very nicely. Mm. All um, the slow mo. And lighting. you can see that she's obviously very uncomfortable. Uh, flanking her are two gentlemen, uh, one you're familiar with. Uh, oh. The recently hatless and uh, oh, now shit. recovering Diego Ortega. <laughs> Still favoring one leg. Still favoring oh, I leg. I want to tip my hat to him. Unhappy. I want to tip my hat to him if we see each other. He definitely sees that and like, if looks could kill, man, if looks could kill. I use disarming smile. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, on the other side of Pastora, there is a... A uh, fairly uh, nice-looking fellow. He, he looks pleasant. Uh, obviously, he's been to the sea. You can just tell from the way he dresses. Uh, he's got a slight sway as he stands, as if he's used to being on a ship. Um, obviously, a ship's captain of some sort. Uh, and both of them are just standing that little bit too oh. close to Pastora. Is he the captain just of enough... the Potentia? He's most likely the captain of the Potentia. Mm. One Captain Silva. And yeah, just looking at them, you can tell they're flanking. Something her. has gone on. Something is up yeah. with Pastora. Uh, the guests are enjoying themselves from you can see up on the balcony that sort of flanks the big central room. Um, they're sort of playing some tunes, and there's an area to your left where some people are kind of dancing a bit. And there's been furniture that's been brought into the room, and people are lounging and snacking. Um, you don't know if there's necessarily going to be a full-on meal. You kind of think this is going to be a tapas sort of affair. Um, and out back, you can hear the clash of swords and, like, polite applause and laughter as apparently some people are doing some, like, recreational sword fighting on the back lawn. <laughs> uh, so that's Perfect. the scene you see as you walk in and tip your hat to a now livid Diego. Uh, new um, heroic plan. We also <laughs> rescue Pastora. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so are we being introduced to, um, uh, to the Lord of the Manor and his guest, the bishop? Well, you guys are having your names called out. Dirk oh, is being introduced <laughs> to the man of the house and the bishop. I love uh, it. I'm going to simply tag along with Dirk. Okay. Uh, you look fancy enough. I don't think the servants Feel are going to push you. <laughs> Should I win some fencing competition? If only because they're like, well, we'll give you enough rope to hang yourself. But whatever. Yeah. Um, and very, very... She look, kind of looks to Dirk and just gives him a knowing look as they, uh, as they walk uh, towards the, uh, the Lord and the Bishop. 
Yeah, so you go up the lovely carpeted stair, uh, and yeah, the, the servant sort of gives a quick little bow as uh, Don Mikado sort of turns to look, and uh, the bishop slowly sort of turns to look at you, um, <clears throat> and the servant clears her voice, clears her throat. <clears throat> this is Dirk Weiss, a adventuring Eisen who has come here to seek religious shelter from the persecution that is so common in his homeland. Uh, he is a, a, a hero and a man of the highest caliber. Uh, it is my honor to introduce him to you, Don Mikado, and your holiness, the bishop. Uh, and and then he, the servant kind of looks to Anna Henrietta and company. And then, like, <laughs> company? Backs away All you need is you one look, though, for a temp roll. <laughs> <laughs> and company. Oh, my God. Um... Okay, so what what I would like to do is give just the fanciest bow that Dirk knows, right, to... You the probably d- know some pretty fancy bows. Oh, God, it's going to take a full minute <laughs> to do this bow. Like, a full minute. Oh, my, oh my <laughs> God, it's the, it's the fucking Witcher 3 scene of, yo, this is how you, you know, how do you bow properly? <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's it. <laughs> Um, give just, left hand flourish. Just the most. Take one th- left foot back one half step. <laughs> <laughs> just the most <laughs> intense, time-consuming bow that bow there to is. The and at the end of it, I would like to reach forward and gently take the bishop's hand and kiss it, just with oh, a dear flourish. Lord, we're about to die. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> um, <laughs> because Dur- you can Dur- see this happening, Anna Henry. Anna, <laughs> I wish you to see. Um, wh- okay, while well, Dirk is mid-stupid bow, Anna <laughs> looks the bishop in the eye and gives her this no... This is when I activate the friendly uh, ah. virtue. This knowing eye roll of just like, oh my god, I can't believe he's doing it again. Don't you undermine um, me. <laughs> and, and then um, as he is about to reach forward for her hand, Anna reaches out um, with not her parasol, but just her fan, <laughs> and lightly gives him a little tap on the hand. Uh, no, no, monsieur. The, she is a bishop of the, uh, Vatici- of the Vaticine Church and their uh, Inquisition. You cannot treat her as you would a common lady. She is a powerful woman of learning and great respect. Ah, well, you gambled and won. Uh, the bishop just tilts her head slightly in a way that says, I am pleased enough to stop relaxing, or to, to begin to relax my neck slightly. Uh, which for her, you think, is beaming. Um, and she I sort would, of just says, If that had gone wrong, I was ready to use an you. honest misunderstanding. And then, like, extends her hand, sort of, and, and is going to let you kiss her ring. Yes! <laughs> I, I do so with great gusto. Her <laughs> hands are so cold. <laughs> It's weird. <laughs> not that you've ever, not that you've ever touched a dead body, but you're now you know what it's like. You imagine <laughs> that that's the feel. I mean, I could be into that. <laughs> you are uh, so bored. <laughs> I'm an Ison. You, you don't know. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know me. <laughs> <clears throat> so yeah, she lets you kiss the ring and sort of just says, "Go with this, my children," and then just turns back to look at the party. And uh, Don Machado is a little bit more interested in being a good host. <laughs> Intrigued. Um, and he sort of ah. Uh, well, thank you. I'm very glad that uh, you could attend it, and it's good to know that my reputation can still bring in people from afar. Although I suspect you're here more to see the bishop than myself, aren't you? Oh, no, sir. Of course not. I ha- would not have been kept away from your home regardless of who else was here. And I'm just laying on the charm so thick for him. Uh man, he's eating it up with a fucking spoon. <laughs> um, <laughs> Because uh, he's been spending all this time with the bishop who gives him fucking nothing, right? <laughs> um, he hasn't had any so adulation. He's super susceptible to this. <laughs> I'm going to be his best friend for the night. <laughs> all right, oh. so at this point, uh, people are kind of sort of free to mill about as they'd like. Uh, does anybody have anything planned? Uh, I was going to engage the bishop for a short time. In a mm-hmm. conversation specifically directed at her, um, where Anna essentially just says that she is very pleased to see um, a woman rise to such a uh, position within the church, and that is an example for others, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, as we heavily lay out the cover story, not being like Dirk's overly flattering, 
but definitely um, con- politely congenial, but not overstepping one's boundaries, which okay. the Don has been doing the entire time. Oh, yeah, the Don... Because again, he's a noble, but like he doesn't deal with clergy very often. This whole he's a Castilian new country, uh, provincial noble, which means he is just overly friendly with people as a matter of course. Oh, exactly. good, we're gonna get along. Uh, that does not fly <laughs> with Fiero. And so, yeah, that, that's uh, uh, that, uh, okay. That's a good plan for you. Uh, anybody else have any intentions at this party? Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, Francesco, uh, there's some uh, friendly fencing happening outside. You say? Indeed, there is. Uh, I uh, am thinking that I would like to uh, get involved in a gentlemanly sport uh, to uh, also, uh, you know, win the attention and rose of one Pastora Montabon uh, or Machado. <laughs> Mont- Montana is the name of the place we're in. Well, you can see that Machado is definitely like looking at all you guys, and there's pretty naked pleading. In her face. <laughs> okay. And, and, I, and, well, and I want to use, uh, like, like uh, the, the sport and that and to... I mean, I, I, I do want to get her away from Diego. I do want to get her away from, from the captain and, uh, and and definitely rescue her and be the one who rescues her and be the one that she knows I was the one who rescued her. Uh, <laughs> but also, uh, I can use this fencing competition to form a distraction for everyone because I have a friend at court. Uh, right uh, when we're at a party, yes, and uh, and I'm certain that one of the uh, of, of of the fencers out there uh, involved in this company is none other than than the friend that I trained with as a diestro back in 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 the uh, in the main country here in Castile, who who would you, yeah. you know go through all the parties and be at the competitions. And what are the odds that my dear friend is here in that back area fencing away, clattering with swords? Who will of course be happy to put me up in the finest pro wrestling style to make me look the hero <laughs> and, <laughs> and form the distraction Absolutely. necessary He's your to heel. separate. How long has it been since you've seen this friend? Oh, oh, it's been about, uh, let, let's, I mean, I'm not that old, so it can't be that long. Um, uh, uh, a year or two? Okay. Uh, so yeah, as you make your way back there, you good friend, uh, Gerardo Palomo. Gerardo. Yeah, as you get back there, Gerardo's just sort of finishing up uh, a a duel that he was having, and he sort of just like cut somebody's sleeve, and uh, the crowd sort of applauds, and he sort of says, says "Ah, touche, my friend," and the, the other guy sort of like, "Ah, you got me," and does a little bow and goes off to get himself a drink, and uh, the adoring crowd kind of like you know gives Gerardo some compliments as he makes his way out to get a drink too, and then he sees you, yeah, a, a, a friend- oh, Francisco, still the. Still the pretty boy with the fencing, as always. Ah, uh, well. Putting on a show? just uh, a pretty boy nowadays. And he sort of, like, gives, like, a effectively a 17th century collar pop um, <laughs> and highlights on his lapel that he now has a pin that he's wearing that identifies oh. him as a member of the Douglas Guild. Oh, I'm so jealous, but also so impressed. I'm happy for him and mad it's not me. <laughs> 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 These uh, two warring, conflicting feelings are inside at the same time. Ah, uh, it's so good to see you. I, I take it you're here to test your metal, huh? Give these folks a bit of a show? A little of column A, a little of column B, a little of save the girl. Oh. And then I want to carry him aside and, 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 and discreetly just, like, find a quiet corner and fill him in as my trusted friend on sort of the real business that's brought us here into Montanen. Ah. And letting him know that you know, um, and so you can see that I'm on a mission of love. He's he's not surprised by what you're laying out. <laughs> I'm always, I'm he's always, always on a mission of love. <laughs> but he is also like kind of let down. He's like, ah, oh, I was really hoping this would be just like a good party, but alas, it seems that you know mischief and it's mayhem. It's always shenanigans are... when I walk in. It's always the What's love that? with you. It's always shenanigans when Francesco walks into the party. Always shenanigans. Uh, how about Jose Wick? What's he up to? I'm looking for finger sandwiches. <laughs> there are indeed lots of uh, finger foods. Funnily enough, finger sandwiches don't exactly exist yet because nobody has really formalized the sandwich as a fancy thing you do. Oh my god, invent sandwiches. <laughs> All right, I'm going to keep an eye there out. There are like the- canapes and things. I'm going to keep an eye out in the crowd, kind of make sure I know where all the... The goons are all the exit line and stuff like that. Keep close to Dirk, because nice. I'm still getting paid for that. <laughs> and uh, 
basically making myself as useful while remaining as invisible as I possibly can. Great. So you kind of like sidle up sort of close to where the platform is, like by the base of the stairs, maybe. Mm hmm. Nice. Um, so you're taking a look around. I, uh, you can see that there's about, it's hard to say about 20 guys kind of coming and going, uh, that are obviously like inquisitorial, like henchmen. Um, they're sort of providing the, the general sort of security for the building. Um, it looks like there's about 10 of them in this main area at a time. Another 10 that circulate on the grounds and sort of switch off shifts as you watch. Um, on top of that, uh, you can see that uh, in terms of exits, there's the main door that you guys came through. And then there's wings to either side. And then to the back, sort of, I guess, to the, the, the north of the building, uh, there's two hallways that head out that side. Actually, five ways out of this room, Will, not counting the second floor, which mirrors the first one. Will, since this Plus is a... there's the door that I sabotaged, right? The, yes, With the, the, the door that you sabotaged is back uh, on the right-hand side uh, on the, the north sort of hallway. Will, since okay. this is a party to announce the wedding of Adela Friero and Roman Machado, uh, is the groom-to-be expected to make an appearance tonight? Uh, if you ask around about that... I uh, would somebody like says, well, yes, of course. Of course he is. Uh, it should be any minute now. It's so nice to see true uh, love brought together. Ah, uh, indeed, indeed. <laughs> uh, and so, yeah, after a few minutes, um, Don Machado sort of kind of gets quiet up on the platform, and uh, you can see that, like, the bishop and Diego have sort of exchanged a look. And so Diego's in the process of trying to tell everybody sort of what's the deal with you guys, because they don't necessarily know yet. But before he gets the chance, <laughs> uh, one of the doors on the, the upstairs hallway sort of gets opened up, um, and a servant kind of comes in and says, <clears throat> announcing the bridegroom, Ramon Machado. And uh, the musicians, this was a cue, they sort of changed some music to be a little bit more sort of fanfare-y. Reigns of Castamere. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, Reigns of Castamere, exactly. <laughs> and from that hallway comes a young man who, like, vaguely looks like Ramon. Oh. <laughs> like, the hair color's right and the height is right. And I guess if you hadn't seen the guy in a few years, how would you know? <laughs> Damn, he's so he still comes on the in boat. In his clothing that now that you, you guys can tell is a little ill-fitting. Um, and he comes down the stairs and is given a drink. Uh, and he comes to stand behind, beside his new fiance. You can see that uh, Pastora is internally losing her shit. She knew this was going to happen. She really thought something might intervene. She doesn't know what to do. Um, but this is what's been bugging her. And so the, the, the false Ramon takes, takes up his glass and says, Dear friends, uh, countrymen, neighbors, thank you so much for coming and celebrating my soon-to-be bride and myself and our coming wedding. I am honored that I should have caught the attention of such a fine, upstanding, and pious woman, and I consider myself blessed by Theus himself that I will be able to assist in her holy works and ensuring that the Inquisition's light will rout out all the corruption of this world and fortify the faith of you, my friends and neighbor. As he gives his little speech, you get the impression that A, this guy's had training. He is, she didn't just bring along some schmuck. This guy, like, he knows how to give a speech. Mm -hmm. The other thing you pick up is that a lot of people in the audience did know Ramon. And this is super fucking weird. This is a small town. But they don't want to do anything about it. Hmm. Hmm. How do you react? <laughs> I want to oh, react by oh, bouncing off. Toughie. I could puke <laughs> on his shoes. You could. You know, I no learned reason. a lot about the family today as I was going about uh, asking a bunch of questions, right? And I, yeah. and, and I just want to start, like, I just want to call him out on the... on. He, yes, he, he's learned a script. But there are there are there are those little details that he can't know. Those little bits Indeed, about, you did about him growing those. up that I that I that I like uh, 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 like his 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 friend here that's in the audience in the room and 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 uh, interesting. Oh, 
I really wish I'd learned if Ramon had a particular, like, noticeable scar. <laughs> um, <laughs> he could lift up a shirt. You know what? I think he does. I think on the back of his hand, he's got a, a, a scar, for a rapier wound. Just mm-hmm. a, a light one, but it's very noticeable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that he got when he was first training with swords. He never really took to it. Um, oh, we got to get him into this little sport <laughs> game. Oh, same, with, Ramon. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, it, well... And while Justin is doing that, I have the ship's manifest, right? You do. Or at least a copy of it. Yeah, and that would list not just names, but probably, like, what uh, what position people are described to be in kind of thing. Absolutely. And is there any way I might be able to figure out by reputation, perhaps? This guy, this obviously isn't this guy's first con job. No, this guy is definitely a seasoned con of some degree. We're, we are both playing the game. You're all playing the game now. Do I? Can I get a name? Can I figure out what his actual name is? Uh, yeah, I think you can figure out his actual name. Um, his name is well. Okay, the name that he used. This may not be his actual name, right? Yeah. Um, but the name that he used is uh, Emiliano Perez. Perez. Excellent. Yeah. So I guess we just have to crash this wedding. Oh, I guess you might just have to crash this sort of... Well, they're not having the wedding yet, but, like, you get the impression that, like, if they could do it right now, the would be done with it. How can but I is at least, like, making the gestures towards normality. Also, keep in mind, we've got yeah. a duelist on the team the, the brazenness of replacing this guy in his hometown is enough, right? Yeah. Yeah, we'll have the people will you be g- on our side. You give me and the word so, and I'll start throwing punches. And so the, the oh, false time, Ramon kind of uh, hoists his glass one more time. But enough words from me, my dear friends. Let us dance! Oh! And the music picks up and everybody starts looking for dance words. partners. More words, though. More words. Okay, great. So we're dancing now. Okay. Uh, we're uh, dance partners. Um, Anna will actually ask if um, she might have uh, the privilege of a dance with him. To, uh, uh, on the understanding that she is getting him limbered up until he can da- to dance properly with his betrothed. Uh, after all, these ca- these Castilian dancers are so energetic. Is Pestora dancing? <laughs> nice. Uh, and so um, he sort of says, "Ah, oh, well, uh, gladly if if my my lovely bride to be would be all right with that." And the and bishop I'm friendly with her. Exactly. And the bishop just looks, takes a beat, and says, "Although it is sinful." I appreciate that you have urges that need to be dealt with. You may dance with <laughs> She just called you a horn dog. That's awesome. Is uh, Pastora dancing, or is she staying between What's that? Diego and, uh, and, and, and Silva? Is Pastora joining I, the dance, or is she Captain staying? Captain Silva is going to take her hand and start taking her down to the dance floor. Is this the kind of Spanish um, dancing style where people are going to be exchanging partners throughout the floor? Uh, you're getting the impression that it's going to be more of like a Andango, proto-tango sort of dance going on. Okay. There's a name for it, which I have sadly just forgot. However, that doesn't mean that you can't butt in mid-dance. Absolutely. You absolutely can. Absolutely. Heroically, even. I absolutely will. With great panache, I am going to be attempting to, uh... And so I think we'll do this as a dramatic scene, because it doesn't I, sound like it's yes. come to blows. I absolutely want to swap my hat out with Gerardo and make Diego think that I'm walking out somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> like, That's a great Oh my idea. god, like I in the shitty well Netflix the death note. Yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> like the shitty Netflix death note. Uh, All right, so what is everybody going to try and do as you try to change what's going on here, to try to fix this scene? Um... Anna, What's your approach? We have to Anna, expose Roman. Oh, Go we, we have to expose. Well, we, we got a couple of complications here, right? We we have to expose Roman is an imposter, is Emiliano. We 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 have to rescue Pastora and get her safely away from uh, these people that wish to do her harm and probably replace her too. And uh, obviously, Roman's not at the party, so we got to get him off that boat and get him out of town. So this town's going down in flames tonight. I hope we're all ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, Anna is going to attempt to actually turn Emiliano um, as an agent. Ah, you're going to try and give him a better offer. I'm going to try and flip him. Okay. 
Uh, who? Double and agent. Are you going to just try and be sincere about it, or are you going to try and tempt him? Uh, are you no, gonna I, I'm going him? to attempt. Uh, I'm no. I'm going to attempt to uh, convince him. I'm going to uh, attempt to sell him on it. Um, okay. On the fact that this is a bad game. Because the moment that he's married to the bishop, his life is no longer of value to her at all. I mean, it's obvious within two minutes of meeting the woman that there is a screw loose in her head somewhere. Definitely. Um, she looks at you, she looks at everyone like they're chess pieces uh, worthy of sacrifice. Um, th this isn't about her god or her faith. This is about something is broken in her. And she is going to break everything else. And there are better offers. He's talented. He knows the game. He's skilled. But how long does he really think he's going to be able to pull things off? Even, even if he lives for a while in a town full of this man's nearest and dearest, where he's lacking basic physical details of the man. Everyone knows he's a fake. And all it's going to take is one spark to turn people against him. But, um, there are other opportunities for him uh, in a certain foreign service, at which point I'm also going to leverage the king's favor to solve a problem. Nice, get that hero point. <laughs> I mean, if you really yeah, want to be remote, so yeah. I'm happy to give so him a scar. So you're going to be rolling definitely a, I think this is a resolve convince, in fact. I was hoping for panache convince, to be honest, just because I'm playing and I'm not trying to force him by force of will. I'm trying to use words and uh, the logic around them. Ah, uh, well, then that's going to be a wits convince. You're right. Oh, well, I still get one more die in that than I do resolve. It's all fair. Uh, all right, so, uh, Francisco, you've swapped hats with your buddy Gerardo. Uh, uh, well, what do you got planned? What was I doing? I, I was just talking out loud to the group. I, if, if I, I'm not sure. I mean, that's a plan, certainly, in the back of my head of something that I want to do. Uh, but for okay, now, well, I'm, you certainly can if you'd like. I'm, I'm enjoying the fact that Diego is looking at me with all that anger, and he can't do anything in front of all this polite company. Um, I, uh, uh, I, if, if, we're, if we've got uh, Anna is on uh, Emiliano and trying to uh, flip him, and we've got... Uh, Presumably, the other two might be helping with. I don't know what they're planning on doing. I, uh, I want to help Astora. Uh, got to get her away from these. So you're trying to butt in with she's Captain She's stuck Silva? in this. Yeah, I got perform. I can fucking dance him off the stage. Um, <clears throat> and uh, and he's uh, he he's got her like basically a prisoner in this party. So to separate okay, the so two, you're gonna try and out dance him enough to really and then swap start. places. Oh, I love it. And then, and then swap places that is with fucking awesome. cool. And then swap yeah, places and that's with Gerardo. Definitely take panache perform. Yeah, and definitely. then and then to swap places with Gerardo to then get Pastora out of the house and to our safe house. Okay, because so you yeah, won't be you're, safe you're gonna... once we try to do whatever we're going to be trying to do. Once you do whatever you're going to be trying to do. Okay, that seems reasonable. Uh, how about you, Bree? What is Dirk doing? <laughs> um. Well. I would like Dirk to, um, I, I mean, this is going to look like I'm doing it because I'm trying to help everyone out by, by uh, taking people's attention off of what they might be doing, and that is not even remotely true. It's that I've seen a challenge, and by God, I'm going to do this. Uh, I would like to fascinate and attempt to tempt our bishop. Oh, interesting! So, and this is gonna be this is gonna be gonna one of those things that when heart. when Dirk sidles up to her, like without a drink, hasn't been drinking, hasn't been dancing, right? Is now yep. taking on the performer role of I, I'm also not into any of these worldly things. You know, why don't you tell me about your faith? It's it's so strong, and I am so impressed. By this faith, oh. right? Sort of a conversation. It is your faith as an Ison that has gotten you through the horrors of your <laughs> of life. Of course, right? Like as Ison, we hold our faith so strong from from the horrors in which we live, and and people are going to to take note of this because what is going on? This folk hero is now talking to the bishop, and the bishop isn't just saying like "get the fuck out," right? Um, okay. So I'm hoping that's going to make uh, everything so easier for everyone else so you're, too. You're trying to you're trying to tempt her, right? mm Hmm. <laughs> it's that would be a panache tempt, right? Well, I'm. Or I, would like, it be resolve and wits? Well, it depends. If you if you if you if you want to start talking shop and theology, that's straight up a wits. Mm -hmm. But resolve to get through the you, fear. Yeah, you're trying to get the impression that yeah, we're, I'm I'm like you. I don't care about these things. <laughs> um, hmm, yeah, it's it's probably going to be a panache. I'll give you a panache. Part of me said maybe resolve because like. 
she is uncomfortable to be around. Like, you ought to steal yourself for this. But there's no threat, so, yeah, yeah is, definitely is, panache. Is she more uncomfortable to be around than demons? Because I'm supposed to know what to do with demons. <laughs> Yeah, uh, but, you know what? You don't. you don't. You don't. She is Be terrifying. Quiet. <laughs> Be quiet. <laughs> this is the closest you've it. been to a demon. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, Jose. Yes. What are you going to do, my friend? Wait for an opportunity. Basically, I'm just kind of waiting until they give me the signal to start throwing down. These things are. Not exactly what a mercenary is used to dealing with. I'm not used to dressing fancy and hanging out at parties. I'm used to drink, drinking and brawling. We need so a, we did, well, I mean, we you're not the approach. only person there who's uncomfortable. There are various servants coming and going. Um, you can see that there's other people who don't necessarily fit in with the high muckety mucks. Get the crowd. Actually, um, get- I want to find me a servant, a girl... Who looks like she's a little bit uncomfortable. Could you get the crowd riled up? That is up? not hard to find. Could you get the okay. crowd riled up to call out what is happening with this family and with their town? I've got an idea. Um, like, the servants are the people who are the most upset about this, because, like, they know Ramon. All right, what's your idea, Dodd? Because you do need to have that approach. My plan is, I'm like, hey, so you want to have some fun? Anybody who's getting drinks, make their drink just a little bit too strong. Ah, this sounds like a tempt risk as well. I don't uh, have tempt, but... That's okay, you still got panache, right? Yep. So, okay, so you're going to try and... Uh, you're gonna can try I roll and hero? <laughs> We're able drinkers, we won't get a problem with this. We can out-drink everybody. <laughs> I, can I use all drinking. three hero points on this one? Oh, I am. I'm about to get into a dance-off with Captain Silva. So. I've, I've used my hubris and my virtues. Well, something you can do with a hero point is you can spend it to add a dice to a raise, or to a risk, so yeah, if you'd like, get, get yourself three extras. Yep. Um, <laughs> Will, how many, uh, are we adding any additional dice this scene for, like, first use of skills? I was just about to say, please add both flare dice. Everybody's using these skills for the first time today. Yeah. And it is definitely well described. Roll them up. Okay, uh, so oh, right. two... Dance off, um, terrible warrior special. Three, <laughs> you know what? Um, Will, I'm going to spend a hero point out of die to this roll. Do it. Uh, come on, big money, big money. No whammies, no whammies. Oh, that's a couple tens. I had that... five, I think. Okay. Let's okay. See here. So that was okay. Um, so that's a ten, and that's another ten. Uh, what's, what do I got? I got a six and a four, so that's one. And a seven and a three, so that's four. And then rolling up the low die. That's a six. Ah, uh, okay, I'm only able to form one more pair. So I have five raises. Five. I also have five. Whoever would like to take an action first, please go ahead. Uh, I want to get these people drunk. Yeah, that's a pretty good place to start. Get them drunk and get them sick. Ah. Why do you want them sick? Because they'll be distracted puking, and we can pretty much just walk out of here, because you know what? It doesn't take a lot to fuck up a sandwich. But we can just walk walk out anyway. He's not here. I thought you wanted to get them drunk so you could rile them up to turn against the bishop and the fake uh, fake Ramon. Sure, that works. Like, there's more right. going on here than just Pastor and Ramon now. There's, like, there, there's a coup on this village. Yeah. And, and, the, oh, yeah. And, and the Inquisition wants to take this place and turn it into a headquarters, and no one thinks that they can, they, they have any power to stop them. So we need to get Pastora to safety, and then we need to stop them. So on that note, you find, for, for a raise, you'll find a servant who looks pissed enough that you might be able to convince them. Okay. But getting everyone drunk, getting the guards drunk, that'll be fun, too. <laughs> yeah. All right, so that's uh, my plan. I'm going to walk up okay, to the so bike the, the water lady or the s- servant woman. Yeah, there's a servant lady. She's just sort of finished giving out some sort of like deviled eggs sort of hors d'oeuvre thing and she's making her way back to what you presume is the kitchens. She's as soon as she's away from all the high muckety mucks, she kind of like lets down her like sort of defensive guard a bit and sighs. Uh looks as tired as she is. Uh and yeah, you catch her eye. Uh, well, what do you want? I go, hey, how would you like to have a little bit of fun? I would love to, but first I have a lot of dishes and a lot more plates to serve. 
tell you what, when you're serving those plates and drinks, why don't you make them just about, oh, I don't know, double as strong as you've been doing it all night. Let's see what happens when these uppity ups have a little too much liquor that they can't hold. She sort of like looks simultaneously offended and excited um, and sort of pulls you to the side. Are you crazy? Yes. Yes, I am. (laughs) As fun as that would be, you know what the Inquisition does to people who cross them, yes? All you got to say is you thought you were doing them a favor by making sure they could celebrate properly. It's a (sighs) grand night, is it not? Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Ah, yes. Ah, I won't do it. However, (laughs) I'm so busy... It's entirely possible that I might accidentally leave the liquor cabinet unlocked as I rush out the next course. (laughs) Well, I would be only too happy to assist you. Yes, I'm so tired. Thank you for helping me back to the server. I will do And so she she leads you back to where there is a wide variety of bottles that are out as drinks are being put onto uh, onto various trays and servants are coming and snatching them up and sort of rushing out to keep everybody properly lubricated. (laughs) Mm-hmm. I'm making sure everyone is greased to the tits. Okay, um, you know what? I'm going to say that's going to probably take you a couple more raises. Uh, let's say one for inside the house, one for outside the house. I have five raises. Let's blow three of them. Great. So outside the house, inside the house. And there are some of the inquisitorial guards who start to notice the change. And they come back. And see you sort of there, obviously not a servant, but servants have, like, taken you in and given you a couple of shots, too. Um, they're just glad to have an extra set of hands, really. I'm going to look at the inquisitorial guard and say, lads, let's have a few more drinks, shall we? Uh, and that was another raise as well for the um, for getting the servant to do it in the first place. So that's four raises total is what you're saying? Uh, basically, so one raise to, like, find a servant to do it. And then he spends three raises getting back there and getting everybody blotto. Um, so yeah, I spent four raises in total. The guard sort of takes the, the sort of command that you gave, and he sort of, like, drops his stony face sort of visage and cracks a smile. Ah, ah, this party was so boring! And he sort of claps his hands together and goes and takes a plate of drinks out to some of his compatriots. Not anymore, lad. Not anymore. Ah, uh, so you are starting to get people pretty hosed. Um, out on the dance floor... That's translating to some pretty intense dancing starting up. Wonderful. Uh, Who would like to step in? I, I believe, uh, Francisco, well, you're on the dance floor. Oh, okay. Uh, I was the next one with raises I'm down. But oh, you, yeah, you, you sorry. You, you can if you want. You can if you want. Um, My toe is a tap. I'll though. use the using the cover as sort of the tempo goes as we're dancing. Um, she she says, you know, you, you are very skilled uh dancer um and then she she almost acts as if she stumbles over his name and accidentally calls him emiliano okay uh, you you get like a raised eyebrow as he like lets you go for like a, a pose and he does like clap, 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 sort of thing yeah i imagine uh, there's clapping involved in this dance oh pro- absolutely there's there's clapping and he spins away from it spin she spins away from it spins back into it um she says oh you just you know you remind me of uh you you don't uh Look like a, a Ramon so much, but uh, a, a Ramon. She says, not the Ramon. Um, but um, oh crap! I'm trying. I'm trying to figure out exactly how she'd phrase this. Is something to the effect of, um, but of course, you do look like a man who uh, who is about to uh, accomplish great things. All of right. Course, um, but yeah, I've told you kind of the plan is just sort of getting him receptive to the idea and bringing him around to the realization that he is, he literally exists only to be married and then she'll probably, and then getting him to believe that she'll probably kill him or let the peasants do it for her. <laughs> Fair enough. Because he is only a tool for her. Okay. So let's break this down. It's going to take a raise to get him to drop his kayfabe. That's done. He's a pro, but you you get through it. It's more than an eyebrow now. He knows straight up onto him, and he's not gonna make a scene. Uh, and then he's gonna listen to listen to sort of what you have to say. Yeah, and that's that's the logic end. You figure the logic end takes a uh, raise. Yeah, that's gonna take a raise to get the logic to him. And, and now here, then... there's gonna be a slight 
sort of intercession, though, um, as you sort of lay out, you know, oh, he's doomed, he's going to die, he sort of chuckles. <laughs> uh, I would be if I was going to stay around, Signora, but that is not the plan. Young Ramon is going to take up the cloth and go to Vatacine City, where he will have a very successful life, which he will bring back to his home via letters on time to time, or so I'm told. And that's very interesting, uh, Monsieur. But that's hard. It seems a waste of your talents in the end. It a man would be like... if we were wasting my talents. Oh, I think those talents could be far more valuable to another employer. Ah, okay. Now drop that raise. Let's talk valuable. Let's talk valuable. Let's How valuable talk... is valuable? Let's talk the fact that there is a very good market for an active intelligence um, individuals in Castile, especially those who have uh, become very close to the Vatican Church in their time. And that, right. it would, and that it would certainly line his pockets for far longer than this con, and it would be far more interesting in the long run. Okay. He sighs. Uh, I, I fear you're right, but if only there were somewhere that I could spend that sort of wealth. Oh. Uh, you understand, of course, that the Inquisition, they, they keep one on a tight allowance. Uh, but there are always ways around the Inquisition's allowances, especially when there are other allowances to be made. Indeed. Well, if I could receive some concrete assurance, I, I, I suppose uh, I could be interested in helping out a, another friend. He says as he does sort of like a twirling, stomping, clapping thing himself. I can assure you that a sign of good faith will arrive to you remarkably soon. All right. And so spend another raise on that. What do you send him as a mark of faith? I'm going to drop a full point of wealth on it. Damn right. Spend that wealth in a raise, and <laughs> you bought yourself a double agent. Hey! Fantastic. So that uh, puts me out of raises, then. Great. Yeah, Yano has joined the party. Very well done. <laughs> uh, <laughs> also on the dance floor, Francisco. Ha <laughs> ha ha! Oh, if only... Uh, where's my castanets? Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> There, there, there's, there's no double agent. There's no flipping. I just am um, going to dance Sylvia off the floor and uh, gain Pastora. And then in the commotion, as people are getting drunker around us too. This party people must are be getting, getting shitty. They're getting loud <laughs> and just getting a little messy. It's just the sort of distraction to um, just get into a nice dance using all my fencing abilities as well and 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 parrying in the dance floor uh i uh i'm going to uh get pastora and uh let her know we're going to get her out of here and uh and using gerardo uh my friend here in the court to um uh, uh shuttle her off to our safe house but it's going to take okay. her performance as well in the dance and and, and we're going to i have to, i'll have to communicate that to her as as, okay, as so there's sylvia there i mean he's not going anywhere so it's time to push him away Okay, so one raises. raise to get Captain Sylvia off her. Bang! It's, I, I, I pushed that raise away. Um, <laughs> yeah, no problem. Yes. And, and then it's going to be another raise to sort of get your plan across to her through the medium of dance. Interpretive dance. And then hopefully she understands. <laughs> Does she seem relieved to see me in my fancy hat? Um, She doesn't. Okay. <laughs> She seems relieved. It takes her a minute to remember. <laughs> oh, yes! <laughs> Dancing you. fool! You were the one with her. Yes, I, I remember, yes, the, you, you were the teamster friend. that helped save me. <laughs> oh, yes, I, you, you're the, you're the, the coach teamster. driver for that lovely peasant. <laughs> uh, what was his name? Oh, uh, Sen Senor Vice. <laughs> I, I believe it's Vibe. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, please, if you can get me out of here, that would be delightful. And then one more raise to dance her to the edge and swat places with uh, Gerardo so we can get her out of there. Yeah, or or I guess, or or how about, I was going to do the swap of the hat, right? And yeah. uh, So I'm swapping my hat and Gerardo's going to stay on the dance floor. Ah, uh, yes. And then the two of us are going to out okay. the door. 
So, oh man! So you do the head switch, and then you start to duck out the door. So you're you're making your way out. And I, I got see. a bit of a head switch. All right. <clears throat> I still think you're there. At, uh, <laughs> our good friend, Hail Vice. Hello. <laughs> um. So I have four raises. Okay. Um. And I am going to um. I mean, begin. Is it going to take one of my raises to begin a conversation with the bishop? Uh, you can begin a conversation with the bishop, all right, but if you want to make a change to it, that's where the raise comes in. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to start a conversation with the bishop, um, uh, complimenting her, of course, right? Okay, um, what are you complimenting her on? It's it's so wonderful to see such a strong woman, right? It's it's And so okay. strong so strong in countenance and so strong in faith and not giving in to any of the vices of the party and just laying it on real thick. Nice. She is uh, definitely enjoying it. <laughs> oh, man, I'm so excited. <laughs> um, yeah, it's hard, it's hard to tell. There's like a slight tightening at the edges of her eyes, which you think is the like ghost of where a smile would have reached. Were she still capable? I'm taking it as a smile, 10 out of 10. <laughs> Um, and so then I'll, uh, I'll continue on, um, asking her more about, more about living as a bishop and what her life is like and kind of trying to gently get her to tell me things. Not, not in a probing way of like, I want to know everything about you, but in a, in a very friendly sort of like, no, but tell me about yourself, of course, right? I want, I want to get to know you. Okay. And she starts to oblige you. In fact, give, spend a raise definitely to get her talking about herself. Amazing. Um, so yeah, you burn a rage, she starts talking about herself, uh, and she kind of gives you sort of a, a sense of where she's come. She she agrees that, you know, women rising to her rank on the Inquisition side of things is a bit more rare, but she feels that, you know, as a woman, she has a duty to sort of help guide Mother Church to have that feminine influence, uh, because there's a moral sort of requirement uh, that, you know, women need to be a part of this, uh, that it shouldn't fall solely to men, um... And she kind of starts talking a little bit about, like, growing up. Uh, she's actually from San Juan, which is fairly close by. Oh. Um, you know, she grew up on the streets as a pauper. Um, and, you know, she, that's when Theus came to her. Uh, she'd been beaten up by some thugs. And she saw so clearly that, you know, Theus helps those who help themselves. And so she beat those young men within an inch of their lives <laughs> and to show them the power of Theus. Oh my god, I love um, her. <laughs> and like she starts giving you like a fairly grizzled like, oh, you took like Dirk, you took a hard right turn <laughs> real young and you missed Albuquerque entirely. You were very much like church militant your whole life. Amazing. Um and so yeah, she starts sort of dealing that sort of thing. She's mostly paying attention to you. Uh where are you you've got her buttered up now. Where where are you hoping to take her? I I mean in the in the like physically? <laughs> Like in terms of oh, oh, all the way, physically, but like in terms of the back of the Volkswagen. <laughs> do it, I mean, motherfucker! Do it. What are you hoping to do in the story? What are you how, What are you hoping to do now? Push her down You've the well. Listening to you and opening up. Uh, Don Mikado is sort of like nearby, and he's amazed. She said more words to you than than she said to him in however long this scheme's been going on. Um. So. Uh, what I just like table talk. Um, what I am trying to do here as Dirk is totally just a like notch in the belt trophy kind of like, haha, I got a bishop, ten out of ten, right? Like not nice, <laughs> but keeping her so it. distracted I that mean, she won't the, notice that the, the story is just absconded. That, like, she hasn't picked that up yet. No, um, so she's so innocent. Can I can I use another raise? To be like, oh, well, why don't, you know, why don't you come walk with me, right? And I'll actually, like, physically kind of take her for a walk in, like, the quieter parts of the garden. Okay, so you, like, make, you gesture uh, for, for that, and she goes, instead, let us, let us retreat higher up, away from this. I, I just like the, the feeling of the, the air off the sea. Oh, absolutely. And then and then I I start telling her stories about my imaginary childhood <laughs> in Isen. There's only swamps in Isen. Right? No, there are I'm all just... of these swamps and there's mud everywhere and I've just come to dislike water so much because of it. <laughs> 
Oh, oh my god, you're getting very close, though, to the Anakin Skywalker. I don't like sand. sand. I don't like sand. Uh, like, sand gets everywhere. Um, so yeah, so she, she leads you upstairs to, like, the balcony around. Uh, there's some musicians up there who are playing. They're playing um, out. And it's really drunk. quiet up here. There's not a lot of strings coming and going. Um, th this is, the hallways up here obviously lead to, like, <clears throat> the private parts of the house. Of course they do. The <laughs> guests don't really go there. <laughs> <clears throat> There's a couple of inquisitorial guards, but they're not listening. As the voice of your conscience, do everything <clears throat> you know you don't want to do. Just do it. <laughs> what and conscience, so, God? <laughs> <laughs> and so the bishop sort of, again, because you spent a raise to sort of mm -hmm. get her even further on your side, right, to get the message across. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, she, she sort of, like, leans into you and goes, you know, those who have suffered as we do, it impacts our outlook. And then she, like, leaves a nice pregnant pause. And our appetite. <laughs> Whoa! She this just throws my raises at Brie. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best. Um, uh, yeah, I'm, Justin is dying. Like, I can't stop laughing can't, because of the look on his I face. I can't breathe! <laughs> <laughs> um, so I... That was... You got beyond seducing the bishop. You've apparently gotten her to reveal whatever kinky shit that she's into. Oh, Fucking so, BDSM, motherfucker! This is the awesome. best thing that's happened in my this, entire life. And she sort of gestures <clears throat> in a broad gesture towards all the people. These... These people do not understand the world as we do. They do not understand the... The joy and the need that comes from, from truly enforcing the will of Theus and showing people the way. Yes, the will of Theus, definitely. Are you, are you so inclined? Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> um, she I'm not... some weird stuff. The fucking, Dirk isn't sure what he's agreeing to, but he's down. <laughs> Inner strength. He's erotica, fucker. <laughs> how, many, how many raises you got left? Two. <clears throat> Two, okay. Is there anything else you'd like to do with them? The bishop I, seems pretty on board with this. Are we fighting? But you get the, the black? impression the bishop doesn't want to leave the like doesn't want to leave the party. I mean, Can we throw our raises to help her. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, would would it be technically leaving the party if we just happened to pop out for a couple minutes to a room? Like, really? <laughs> like, okay. Well, you also get okay. So, like, if you kind of <laughs> suggest some time alone. Yeah, I, I really, uh, I really would just like to hear more about this, uh, the will of Theus, like, but, but privately, indeed. like, I really need a lesson on this. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> uh, will, uh, can I spend a hero point to throw Bree those three extra dice for assistance? <laughs> um, normally you do that sort of thing before you roll, but I'm gonna allow <laughs> All right, okay. um, Bree. I'm spending a hero point. You're gonna roll three extra dice. See if you can make at least one more raise out of those. Yep. 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 Uh, with my with my dice that didn't have a partner earlier, I technically have two. <laughs> Great. So that brings you back up to three to, to three now. To four. One. That'd be four. You're at four. You got tons of raises. I got so many raises. All We're right. Doing oh this. God. So she sort of nods a little bit. <laughs> I was concerned that I wouldn't find anyone uh, who I shared anything in common with amongst these provincials. She's, I'm she's glad going... to see that the reputation of your countrymen is well deserved. She's going uh, to at least murder in terms me. Of their... <laughs> like she's going to in, murder me. At least in terms me, of their she... resolve, <laughs> maybe not in their theology. <laughs> she's just going to like murder me and leave me for dead, isn't she? <laughs> well, she's going to say, as it so happened, when I came here, I found some very disturbing practices, and some people who desperately need to know the true way to salvation. Uh -oh. <laughs> They're in the church at the moment. Oh, if really? you care to join me, we could retire there and do our work together. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going actually with her. Smiles. I'm going what? with her. Ten out of ten. I don't know what I'm getting into, but we're going. You're going <laughs> to save a bunch of priests. <laughs> save. Okay, oh, so... So you spend another raise to, yeah. to get out of that party sort of <laughs> with the bishop. Going to the church. <laughs> You're going to the yeah, church. Yeah, we're going to the church. Take me to church. To the church. Yeah. Uh, everybody else, of, uh, everybody else the burned chapel, their raises, correct? Yep. I still technically have two more, <laughs> technically. Okay, so we'll quickly cut to Jose. Jose, what are you up to, man? <laughs> I'm people, to hose, one... people aren't paying attention. Uh, the Don, bishop just one left more. and nobody knows. Oh, I had one more? Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, one more. We're three. Okay, in that case, um... Uh, can I help Diego get his lady out, or they're gone? 
Um, they're they're on the way. Um, like like you're talking about Diego and his lady. You're talking about uh, Francesco. Francisco. Francesco, yeah. Okay. Are they gone? Uh, yes. They they're on there. They're just leaving. Yeah. In that case, I'm gonna quickly make my exit and uh... protect me, Jose. I have no more raises. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. My job here is done. <laughs> yep. People are drunk and are gonna fuck. I'm good. Okay. Yeah, We're same, making off like uh, young. <laughs> you're gonna, you're to starting Francisco. to make your way to the exit as well. Yep. Okay. Great. Um. <laughs> so. <laughs> I know you. you Three. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is the cliffhanger moment, isn't it? You and the bishop get to the bishop's carriage. <laughs> um, the bishop's had it called up. Um, uh, you're not sure where this might have been the church's here's carriage that like, or maybe they brought it on a ship. That seems crazy. Either way, this bishop's got a carriage. Ten out of ten. Uh, and yeah, somebody gets drawn up, and the footman opens the door. Um, and she gets in and sort of like gestures behind for you to, for you to follow and sort of takes your hand. Yeah, will do. 10 out of 10. Yep. And as I'm soon in. as that I'm sort in. of happens, Uh-oh. you see the bishop sees something behind you and that like rock hard, like poker face oh, fuck. shatters into blinding rage. Uh-oh. Just instant disgust and un- unconceivable anger mm. inside just as sort of Jose and Francisco are just ducking out, and um, Anna Henrietta has sort of just finished up her business, the main doors of the house slam open, and in comes a young man, covered in lacerations and bruises, soaked to the bone in the seawater, with like a bent, smashed up cutlass in hand. He points to Emilio, and, or Emiliano, and says, You are trying to steal my life! Oh. And scene as Ramon shows back up. Oh, best laid plans. <sighs> Cock blocked. <laughs> you know what? Oh. It's okay. I spent all that time turning him. <laughs> I'm just going to have him fuck. I'm just going to get him to admit to it. I'm just. And yeah. speak with the bishop. Oh, you you got the two blasts of duty. Roman. And if yeah. it comes to a duel, I got a duelist friend on the party on the scene. So uh, Exactly. I, you guys are in a pretty good position as. Shit goes south. I just really Bishop wanted Piero. to see what was going to happen and with I the still Bishop. have my parasol. <laughs> and you still have your parasol. Uh, so I think that's a good place to wrap things up. Uh, I've been Will Mitchell, your GM for this evening, and I'm joined with... Uh, I'm Mike, the, the Birdman Dog! <laughs> so <you're playing? laughs> Who are you playing, Mike? I'm playing Jose Wick, a Castilian mercenary who loves the drink. Apparently. Uh, I'm... Derek the Bard from Chase of the Muse playing Len- uh, Lady Anna Henrietta Depay. The uh, only person here who apparently isn't just 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 live for causing chaos. I would uh, fun uh, that way. <laughs> I, I, I would discount that. I uh, I actually rescued the lady. Uh, yeah. Francesco Florento. Uh, we, uh, as I abscond with Pastora. I, uh, and I'm just Nico. Oh, I gave up my hat. Oh, you gave hat. up your hat. Maybe You're going to have to get another hat. Maybe you got a new hat. You continue being hat hobo. <laughs> it's beautiful. So he gets his power. I'm pretty poison. Yeah, playing uh, Dirk Vice, who like oh, so close. So close. Also, so it close. sounds like hey, we got to we got to save those three. It sounds like they're gonna like burn the church or something tonight and kill them all. So the uh, bishop has no idea you're a part of this. So you're oh, still in a good position there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, she still, still got it. One of the I villains. still got it. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much for joining us. Tune in next week for the thrilling conclusion of our seventh C campaign. Week after uh, next. Yeah, that's week every other way. Yeah, it doesn't matter. The uh, next episode. Thanks for thanks for tuning in, and we'll uh, hopefully have you here then. Well, sometimes, Dirk, you get in a little too over your head. The final chapter to our 7th C story, Love and Consequence, in two weeks' time on Tuesday. But the Terrible Warriors have new episodes out every Tuesday and Thursday, and we are rotating through, heading to our finales of 2017. On Thursday, Derek the Bard and his Canadian crew are still trapped, I mean enrolled, in Kagagami High. And it wouldn't be an adventure through the school year if we didn't have a Battle of the Bands. Oh, you're not part of a band yet? Don't worry, I'm sure you'll improvise something on the spot. There's something about the third episode in this batch of campaigns that just seems to be where all the stories peak at their most craziest. Oh, it 
speaking of peaking in episode three, you may have listened to the last episode of Star Wars Ashes of the Empire. And, well, if you haven't, I'll try and be as spoiler free as possible. But something hit the fan. Loyalties have been tested, and now a spotlight is shining very harshly on our three Imperial officers. They have one episode to ensure they still have a job when this is all done. The finale to Ashes of the Empire on Tuesday. And next week on Thursday... Alternating with Kakagami High, the finale to Derek the Bard and his Edmonton Crew's story of Unknown Armies, a tale by Alan Smithy. It's your simple story about carnivals of the damned. Will they be able to stop a killer in the final episode? We'll tune in to find out. And our, and our companion show, The Cambridge Chronicles, is still playing. They're still putting out new episodes every Fridays for the foreseeable future. Cambridge Chronicles is a little different from The Terrible Warriors in that it is one ongoing campaign. They're just playing 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons with the same group of players every single week. It's a truly long-form game. And if you like the long-form stories we have tried out on this show, and you really like that stripped-down feeling of the original Terrible Warrior episodes, well, Cambridge Chronicles is absolutely for you. You can subscribe at terriblewarriors.com slash Cambridge Chronicles. Follow us on Twitter at Dice Warriors. Join us on our Discord channel and chat with us. And of course, if you like hearing the show and you want to be able to support more of it, you can check out our site at Patreon, patreon.com slash Terrible Warriors. Today's Terrible Warriors and your champions of true love were Derek Burrow, Justin Eacock, Mike Dodd, and Bree Poison, Game Master Will Mitchell. And we'll see you next time with Dirk and Friends right here on the Terrible Warriors. 